Did I ever tell you guys that you are the greatest? You certainly are. I'm Raleen Marks. This is the Israel Brief where you check in with me every Monday to Thursday for your top stories making headlines in Israel. As always, brought to you by Lay of the Land. And a huge welcome to our new family and community members. And I, I just want to say thank you guys. Yesterday I mentioned I wasn't feeling great. I woke up with a sore throat and a sore head and was feeling fluey. And you guys are amazing. I received so many lovely messages from you with tips on how to feel better, uh, um, requests to please look after myself, and uh, just some general concern about my well-being. And I so appreciated. Yes, I am uh, quite run down. I am feeling better than I was yesterday, but uh, like so many of us, uh, especially those of us working basically seven days a week because of the, the new cycle, uh, it does take a toll on one's physical and mental health. So thank you guys. That's why you're family and friends and, and community, because you care. So let's take a look at those top stories. We are on day 166 of Israel's war with Hamas, started on the 7th of October following the horrific invasion and massacre committed by Hamas terrorists against Israeli civilians. I think that this is going on to be Israel's longest war that we have ever fought. The uh, only other alternative would be the 1948 War of Independence. Many actually refer to this war as Israel's second war of independence. We are literally fighting for our very existence. So let's take a look at those top stories and we begin again with the United States. Yesterday I brought you the story of the phone call between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu. The president expect, uh, expressed his reservations about Israel's impending incursion into Rafah, that is the last remaining big Hamas stronghold. It is believed about four Hamas battalions remain there. The Prime Minister says that uh, Israel is uh, absolutely determined to go in to eliminate those last remaining battalions because only by doing this do we fully defeat Hamas. His message has been consistent, total victory, total victory, total victory. And of course, here in Israel, there are a variety of opinions on what does total victory look like and should we be going in to, to, to Rafah crossing. The president requested that a team of Israelis meet with a team of Americans to discuss possible alternatives to a ground incursion. And last night, the prime minister announced that he would be dispatching the national security advisor, Tzachi Hanegbi, along with former ambassador to the United States, Ron Derma, along with members of COGAT. That is the unit entirely responsible for ensuring humanitarian aid goes into the Gaza Strip to discuss uh, possible alternatives and ways forward with an American team. Uh, everybody is concerned about the humanitarian situation on the ground in Gaza. We also are concerned about it here in Israel. We are also very concerned that the aid agencies on the ground are not distributing that aid that we are sending in as quickly and as expediently as they should be doing. And of course, we all know that Hamas is hijacking those aid trucks. In fact, they are even selling the humanitarian aid to uh, guards and civilians. You don't need to sell that aid. That aid is free. It's for the civilians. And uh, this needs to be stopped at once. Next week, our Defense Minister Yoav Gallant will meet his American counterpart, the Defense Chief Lloyd Austin, at the Pentagon. He has been invited there by Pentagon Chief Austin. Meanwhile, there is growing international uh, criticism for Israel's proposed incursion. Yesterday, the Italian Premier announced that, is, that uh, Italy will not support uh, Israel's incursion into Gaza, citing the human humanitarian situation on the ground as a concern. Canada announced last night that they will be suspending their 
one million dollars worth of non-lethal arms uh, that they sent to Israel per, per annum. And while this technically isn't a, a, a huge deal for, for Israel as far as arms are concerned, it does send uh, a, a message, a very strong message from one of our strongest allies. Our Foreign Minister Israel Katz responded by saying history will judge Canada unfavorably. And the Foreign Secretary of the United Kingdom, David Cameron, has said that uh, there are criteria that still need to be met before a permanent ceasefire is in place, including the full removal of Hamas from the Gaza Strip. Staying in the Gaza Strip, uh, we have been speaking about UNRWA, the United Nations Relief Works Agency, the only agency in history that is solely responsible for Palestinian refugees. No other group of refugees uh, around the world have to have their own agency dedicated to them, but Palestinians do. Now, a very, very interesting um, interview from Al uh, Hiwar TV, a London based uh, television station, broadcast last night featuring a former UNRWA official by the name of uh, Ahmad. Uh, who said that Ismail Haniya, this is the political chief of Hamas, was in fact an UNRWA teacher. This is huge because for years Israel has been talking about the incitement that is part of UNRWA textbooks. We have presented to various governments over the years about the incitement in UNRWA textbooks, the fact that UNRWA use their facilities uh, to store uh, weapons. And we have seen throughout this war the role that UNRWA um, has played, even though they're right now Israel says we crucially need them to ensure the dissemination of humanitarian aid on the ground. Uh, when we talk about the day after, we want the complete dismantling of Gaza. Well, Ismail Haniyeh was an UNRWA teacher. Now, uh, if you hear the clucking of chickens, those are the UNRWA chickens coming home to roost. Waydat goes on to say that their textbooks were filled with calling for the right of return and for Palestinian rights until those Zionists and Americans made them remove certain content. Now, I wonder why that could be. Hmm? Moving from the Gaza Strip to South Africa and South Africa's Foreign Minister Naledi Pando and the legal team have appealed to the International Court of Justice yet again. This is the third appeal to enforce further restrictions accusing Israel of causing widespread starvation. Now we know that this accusation of starvation is used by Hamas as part of their strategy to shore up international condemnation against the state of Israel and Israel has said that South Africa is um, acting as Hamas's legal arm. Israel's response to Pandor's request is that it is morally repugnant. Meanwhile, Pandora is off to the United States. This could have something to do with a major bill being introduced in Congress today that uh, requests the United States to review bilateral relations with South Africa because of South Africa's growing stance in favor of uh, despotic regimes like Iran, like Russia, like China, and of course, internationally recognized terrorist organizations like Hamas. So we're going to be watching with great interest. And finally, because we like to end wherever possible on a happy note, the annual happiness index has been released and Israel, although we've slipped from fourth to fifth place, is still in the top five. The number four placeholders are in uh, order, Finland, followed by Denmark, followed by Iceland, Sweden, and then by Israel. There must be something in the Scandinavian uh, countries or the water there that makes these countries uh, so happy. But the happiness uh, index, which was taken over the pandemic as well as uh, October the 7th and the subsequent war, measures things like resilience, purchasing power, healthy lifestyle expectancy, uh, freedom to make choices and all that. So despite what many have to say about Israel and despite the fact that we are not okay at the moment, this is important to note, we are not okay. 
we still as a nation measure high when it comes to happiness. Well, I'm happy that you joined me today and uh, just a reminder to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online, our YouTube channel at the Israel Brief, our Facebook page is at Lottel Site, and we are on X at Lay of the Land 5. I'm Rolene Marks. Guys, huge hug to all of you for all your care and concern. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I will be back tomorrow. And uh, all I can say is God bless you all.